So let's start off by talking about the blood sugar hormones. This is probably my favorite bit to talk about because for me, it was the biggest aha moment. And when it comes to working with clients um, or, you know, yeah, my clients, any of my students, it's it's the most easy bit for us to make change with. It's it's quick when we start to make changes to, um, you know, how we eat, our blood sugars can get rebalanced and we can start to feel change and that can happen quickly. So what do we mean when we're talking about blood sugar hormones? Well, we like to focus on not just, you know, one blood sugar hormone, but, but four. And these four blood sugar hormones that we are talking about are the, uh, the ones that predominantly get imbalanced. We have insulin. Now, most people know about insulin because we hear about it a lot with the um, diabetes epidemic. And insulin's job is to lower blood sugar when our blood sugar gets too high. It's also involved in fat storage. So it will, when it's, uh, when it's being released into the body, it signals to the body we need to store fat. So having too much insulin going on in, in our bodies is not conducive to uh, you know, weight loss, uh, fat burning, anything at all. Um, and we just don't want too much of it in our blood sugars because we end up becoming um, resistant to it. It just stops working so well. And that's where we end up with diabetes. So then we have some that people don't talk about so often. The first one is leptin. Now leptin is a fascinating hormone. It reduces appetite. It's also hugely implicated in fat burning. And it's part of what is one of the hormones that reduces anxiety. Now, one of the main symptoms that women talk about with menopause is I'm just really anxious all the time. I never used to be anxious. And here we go. We actually have you know, blood sugar hormones that are responsible for you know, keeping anxiety at bay. So then we move on to ghrelin. Now, ghrelin and leptin kind of work together. Ghrelin is the hormone that um, after we've eaten, um, it, it drops away and then it slowly builds up over the course of three or four hours. And then we start to hear the rumbles in our tummy, like the little gremlins in our tummy. So I like to call ghrelin gremlin. And that is actually, you know, what that its job is to signal hunger. It's also, again, another one of those that's implicated in reducing anxiety. So incredibly important. And one of the reasons for this anxiety connection is something called the protein leverage hypothesis, which is that humans will be anxious in a state of anxiety until we have eaten enough protein until we found, had it like we until we're completely sort of um our bodies have had all the protein that they need and we're kind of then done um i think it's actually all mammals not just humans um so it's really important that we're gonna this is why this is why i love talking about food strategies because it's so we can we can make change so quickly so then we move on to cholecystokinine which is a little bit of a mouthful so we're going to call it cck now, CCK is hugely responsible for satisfaction. Did we actually, do we feel satisfied from that meal? Interestingly, it's also connected to our gut motility. So what that means is how the gut moves the food through the small intestine. So of course, in the cases of things like irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, um, you know, constipation, it's not moving through. And it's often some of the cramping that we get in things like irritable bowel syndrome is this sort of connection with CCK. And again, look at that memory and anxiety. And I don't know, you know, many women going through menopause where they don't talk about their menopausal memory. So hugely important to be working on blood sugar hormones during menopause. So the reason we've got this here is carbs are important in human diet. They're really important in human diet. But what we have to do is have them in the right quantities. Leptin, ghrelin and CCK are very, very um, sensitive to carbohydrates. And if we're having too many carbohydrates, we will be causing an imbalance with our um, hormones. So let's talk about how it affects insulin. So this is kind of, you know, this is what we call the blood sugar roller coaster. And this nice green line is how our blood sugars are supposed to be throughout the day. So there are these little kind of, you know, peaks and troughs, not these huge, you know, massive waves. 
And so what happens is our, we wake up in the morning and our blood sugars are, are, are um, they start to rise. So the, overnight we fast and they, they drop and drop and drop. Then what happens first thing in the morning is we release a hormone called cortisol. Now cortisol is a stress hormone and its job is to actually put sugar into our muscles and our bloodstream to get us away from danger so that we've got energy to run away. So cortisol will be produced, uh, should peak in the morning to get us up, break our fast, you know, get out of bed, go get food. So it's naturally spiking our blood sugars. Now, when they get to a certain level, the body goes, okay, I've got to do something about this blood sugar. Uh, it's too high. I'm going to produce insulin to bring them back down. The thing is, the insulin doesn't bring them down to where they should be. It brings them back down to where they came from. So, you know, we get this kind of plummet. Now, then most people are, um, you know, going to eat some toast. So carbohydrate, no protein, blood sugars are going to rise, insulin produced, blood sugars are going to drop. So this can happen throughout the day on a, with refined carbohydrates. However, this doesn't just happen because of carbohydrates or un, un, uh, unbalanced carbohydrates. This also happens because we're stressed. As soon as the body is mega stressed, it puts cortisol into the system. And what happens is in response to that cortisol, my blood sugars are going to rise and then I have to produce insulin. So as soon as I'm stressed, I'm then producing insulin, I'm in fat storage, you know, and I'm kind of in this absolute sort of roller coaster pickle. Now, the other reason that, you know, let's think back to those bees, we had those four um, slides with the bees, all of those things can be a source of why we're producing cortisol. And let's go back to the very first one, food intolerances. If I eat something I'm intolerant to, my body will produce cortisol and it will make my blood sugars spike and it will then make them plummet. So it's really important that we start to learn how to balance our blood sugars because of this huge connection with the stress hormones. That's why I love the triangle because all of these hormones are very interconnected and interrelated.